Yes, it is a very sad life when you spent the last 20 years not only in the infection club, but pretty much all of that doing hand hygiene. So I have a very sad, sad life. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still up here and I'm still passionate about it, so you're not getting rid of me just yet. Um, I'll just give you a little bit of background with um, my talk. Alfred Health has been really proactive um, trying to engage and um, get all our healthcare workers on board to sustain and be a part of our hand hygiene program. But in honesty, we haven't always um, got to the 80% which Victoria needs. We're close every time, but we're just not quite there. So we've tried to think about different ways that we can um, inspire our auditors and our healthcare workers. Um, we're very much aware of the auditor fade. We have a lot of long-term auditors, <coughs> and we really want them to you know, not get too bored. But on the other hand, Alfred Health has um, about two years ago decided that all clinical areas need to have at least two auditors and they have to get 50 moments per month. So I'm running monthly workshops as well. So I have long-term auditors and new auditors. So really why bother with all this? Well, we do expect our auditors to give feedback, um, but we really need to try and encourage them and give them some support so that they can actually have some local ownership of their hand hygiene program. We've tried to offer as many different tools as we can um, to want them to want to continue in that portfolio. And we really want to make sure that they understand that they're not alone, that the issues they may have, probably other auditors on the wards have as well. So our aim, rather than me getting up and talking to them all the time, um, which I know my voice becomes a bit of a, just a blur to them after a while, we tried to engage uh, an external, or we did engage an external consultancy firm to come in, who are well known in Victoria for um, motivational things. Um, we wanted them, the participants to engage. We didn't want death by PowerPoint for them. We actually wanted them to be a, um, a part of the workshops. We wanted them to feel safe in the environment that we were going to put them into. Um, but we really, the aim was obviously that they would come out more confident to be able to give their feedback. A little bit about our, con our um, consultant. He was a psychologist. He uses what he calls action methods, which I really think just meant that everybody got up and talked. Um, but anyhow, that was his language. He's a very well known model builder in major, um, he's done a lot of work with banks and uh, insurance companies, education and a fair bit now with healthcare in these smaller group settings. And he, um, he's written quite a lot of programs and um, frameworks. So the brief that we gave him, we wanted him to understand the theory of why we do auditing um, and our auditing process. We wanted him to sort of think about bringing out with our auditors the thoughts and feelings of both giving and receiving feedback. We really sort of stressed to him that the main sort of feedback that our auditors will be giving is verbal feedback, so we wanted that to be a big part of it as well, and timely feedback. Um, we needed to identify different sorts of um, the effective verbal feedbacks you can use. Also for our auditors to be able to practice giving both negative and positive feedback. And to be aware that many of our auditors have actually had um, bad run-ins with giving feedback before, so that he needed to know that in the background as well, that there's been some <coughs> situations that haven't always gone well for them. So his game plan, he really likes to work in small groups. He does like to do role play um, and based on real life scenarios. It's really not an overly structured um, format that he runs. And another word that he uses was speak up, which I think was exactly the same as the other thing before, but it really is participant involvement. So how it actually worked on the, um, each of the sessions was he actually um, had chairs, but he put them in a circle. So it wasn't like he was at the front or anything. It was all equal to start off with. Um, he just had the normal introductions and welcomes. And then he sort of eased into conversation with, well, you know, how do you actually feel when you're auditing? And he left that to the group and it would just run with that and run there. Um, he got the auditors in each group to discuss who they audited, sort of what groups did they, you know, some areas did medical a lot more than others did allied health and we all, they all worked out their little group. Then he sort of dropped the bombshell on them that was actually going to be role play and you could hear the little groups going, oh god no, <laughs> role play because most people hate that. But um, we'll, we'll continue with that one. So then he had the good old fashioned whiteboard in the corner. <laughs> And the little group that they had, the, the list of healthcare workers that they had just discussed, then he got them to put them in order on the list of the most difficult to give feedback to, to the easiest. <laughs> most of the time, you'll guess who was at the top of the um, <laughs> difficult group. 
I won't say that when I'm looking at Lindsay, but <laughs> um, the medical staff for most of them, or all, every group we ran was the hardest. So then he would get the two of them to volunteer to um, start with the role play. And if nobody volunteered, then it was always me and somebody else in the group. And we would just do discuss any of the um, any sort of feedback session that they've had where they've had a bit of a challenge. We usually got them to start with the easiest group, and for most of those um, sessions, it was the domestic staff. They felt were easier to give feedback to, and usually it was something about. Um, glove use, continued gloves or something like that. <coughs> then they'd move on to the next, the next harder group and harder and harder. So with the role play groups, he would get them to sort of think about their, their feelings of both um, what it was like to be the auditor and to give the feedback, um, and then what it was like for the other person to be receiving the feedback, and then they would swap the roles over. Um, and most people worked out in the groups that we actually all had similar scenarios, similar ways to do it, but we picked up little bits of tit tats from each other as well. But being confident in what you had in your mind was what the, um, the main point was. So discussions that came up after we'd had these little role play sessions was that it was always need to, to greet the person. So you need to establish your own credibility. Hi, I'm Kay from Infection Control. I'm going to be doing some auditing. So they know who I am anyhow. Most of them do, but there's a lot of areas that don't. And don't start with an apology. Don't say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm about to. Because what have you done wrong? You haven't done anything wrong, so be positive. And the other um, powerful point that I thought for me was don't, don't give them a choice. Can I just give you some feedback? Because if they say no, <laughs> where do you go? <laughs> so um, for me, that was probably the big take home point of, of all of them, because I often say that. <laughs> um, so try and find a positive to break the ice. Um, make sure that, you know you understand. Let them know that you understand they're busy. Look, I can really see you're busy, and, and walk with them if you need to, or, or work with them so you can talk to them at the time. But keep your, your feedback based on what you've just seen, and often try and suggest any workable improvements. Like, did you know you didn't need to wear gloves when you were doing that? Um, make sure you just give the right amount of it. Don't have, you know, harp on it. Don't follow them into the toilet with it. Make sure that you've just given the feedback you need to move on. And if you've based it on the evidence and the guidelines that are around, then that's always a good point as well. But make sure you encourage two-way conversation as well. They may have a comment or something to say back to you. So other discussion points that came up was there really is no simple answer. There's no, you, you do it this way every time. And each person will tackle the same scenario slightly differently. Try and make it individual feedback. If you've been watching that person, you know, make sure you talked about what they did, not what, not what someone else did. A hard part is to remain non-judgmental because you may have had a run-in with this person before or you may think, oh, they're a doctor, they're not going to listen to me anyhow. You've got to come in with a fresh um, slate every time. Don't assume that they know. Everybody's understanding is slightly different and you don't know what their background is. And the story I always refer to here is when we, the, um, a few years ago when we were travelling around, we saw a student put alcohol-based hand rub on his gloves. Now, he had been told that that made his gloves sterile. <coughs> so he didn't know. So you don't assume. Um, that they're all at the same level. It also depends on what your role is. Are you just the auditor, as you were saying before, or are you um, the nurse manager or the ward educator? Um, are you an allied health person who's auditing the ward? So the feedback may vary on where your role is as well and how you feel, it, and sometimes you need to pass it on. Um, just keep it relevant to the healthcare worker you're actually talking to as well. You know, put no need talking to the environmental staff about um, you know, any procedures that's going to be happening. So make sure it is relevant to them. And as I keep harping on, you have to forget about any um, past run-ins you've had with them. So further discussions that came out as well were, you need to consider also where you give your feedback. Um, I know I'm talking to the converted here, but you don't want to give your feedback to somebody um, in front of the patient, if it's that patient they've just been dealing with and they haven't done their hands. Um, so sometimes you need to take support with you as well particularly if you think you're going into um, a battleground. And there are some battles that just can't be won on the day at the time, so um, you may need to escalate them up the line. Sometimes it's cultural as well, and I know at the moment I've been trying to educate our theatre techs, and I keep hitting a, you know, a brick wall, I'm not getting anywhere with them. And one of them quite rightly pointed out to me, I've been talking to them about, they to put gloves on at the start of the day and off they go. And when we looked around, the whole culture down in our theatre was overuse of gloves. So I've stopped talking to them at, at the moment and doing a whole session. So it's very cultural down there. Um, 
Also need to make sure you find out what is the appropriate way to give any feedback or education to the group. Do they want to, you know, at double task staff time? Do they want it just in a written format? Do they want it informal? Do they so find out what works best for them as well. Um, and then it's always good to follow up after you've arranged this with a just a you know thanks for seeing me today. I'm see you know two o'clock next Tuesday for a in service just to make sure it's all in line as well. Yeah, how do you redeem it? Sometimes you do need to walk away, and you are not going to win that that discussion at the time. Um, and don't respond in anger because you can't take back the said word once you've said it. Go back, compose yourself, talk to your manager, um, get whatever you need to do, and escalate it up the line where need be. Um, and that's the situation where you probably would take somebody else with you as well. I, I have sadly had this situation where I have been um, quite rudely spoken to, and a few of you probably have as well. So, other issues that sort of came up with it as well as when you're giving your feedback is, Matt, you know, Matt, how do you know that you've been heard? So always follow with a positive statement. So you're happy to un to not wear gloves now. So you actually know that they've heard what you've said. But on the other side, have you listened to them? Why are they not doing their hands? Do they have sore hands? Do they know what your process is? Do they know how to get a staff health or whatever you whatever you do? Um, also need to rate what you've just seen and maybe your feedback. Was it something that's really significant and you need to actually put in a, a risk man or whatever management plan you have? Or was it something that you can deal with at the time, like a two-fingered wash under the tap? So there's different, um, different uh, observations as well. Um, other obstacles to be aware of are the politics and the culture of the department. I mentioned the theatre ones. Another one I always remember was the endoscopy department I went to and I could, welcomed in to give education but not to talk about nails because the manager had just had her nails done with all lovely stars. So um, yeah, um, there are professional boundaries. It is a lot of places are still quite hierarchical. Um, but despite this, you still need to work out how you're going to be able to give feedback and timely feedback to the people that you've already been observing. So from our participants that did the little courses, um, the evaluations was, you know, was it really useful? Most of them certainly felt more confident to do what they were already doing. They felt they were doing okay. For most of them, the take home message was don't assume that everybody has the same level of understanding and there are situations that you don't always win. <coughs> Did they like the format? Look, initially they all moaned and groaned about the um, role play, but they actually all felt really safe and quite happy in it. The groups were usually about 10 in a group, um, but it did confirm that what they were doing was okay. There were limitations with um, these courses as well. It was very expensive. We had a one-off funding grant. It was $7,000 for six sessions. Um, because they were only small groups, not all our auditors got there. We have 180 auditors. Um, and most of them didn't get, even though we have in our auditor list some allied, quite a few allied health and one doctor, only nurses attended. Um, and the other issue was that it was two and a half hours and for nursing staff that's a really hard thing to roster because it's not a half a day, it's not anything, it was a, so um, it, that was another issue we didn't consider at the time. But having said that, we've had so many people ringing up now and emailing saying when's the next lot of courses running. So was it worth it? Well, yes and no. It's really hard to evaluate, but antidotally, antidotally, anyhow, by asking them, they all, most of them have said yes. Um, they really did feel more confident to actually go and approach people. The course facilitator really just didn't push the courses. He sort of sat back and just drove it and prompted little conversations, but he um, promoted the concept that whatever style works for you is okay, as long as you're confident with it, because you're basing it on what you've just seen and the evidence. Um, and he prompted discussion points to let the groups run with it and see if they come up with any local ideas as well. It was good morale building for our auditors because it was something that only the auditors got to do, not um, other infection control groups. So would we do it again? Look, if we got the funding, most likely. And would we change the format of it? I don't know, but probably not. So, thank you. Did any of them find it hard to role play in yeah. terms of being the uh, recipient of criticism? Yes, very much so. A lot of them did, um, didn't realise what it was like to actually be told that, you know, you haven't washed your hands or you haven't done whatever. They actually, it was a, a big eye opener for most of them. Yeah. Right. yeah. Can I ask, I mean, there's a practicality question too, like you, the groups are pretty small and yeah. you've got a lot of auditors. So uh, can you see a way that this could be upscaled but still retain the good bits of it? Um, yes, I think so. I would think that um, 
you might maybe not do the role play, but just have op maybe an open forum um, or something like that. But yeah, I'm working on whether how I sat in on all of them, so I know what his process was. That maybe we won't pay him the seven thousand dollars. We'll give that to me, <laughs> and um, I'll run him well, in. I was out. sort of thinking maybe that's why he didn't talk too much. He was just thinking, well, that's twelve hundred dollars for two and a half exactly. hours just exactly. sitting here. So yeah, <laughs> so. Certainly in our workshops, um, which we run every month, I've now put a bit extra of um, how to give feedback into them, because that seems to come up all the time. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Kate. Thank you.